This program is brought to you by the friends and partners of Biblical Life TV. Deep waters to nurture and empower the remnant for the last days. There is a power that is about ready to be released from heaven to those that seek after the things of the kingdom of God. When it comes to the Word of God, there is a supernatural unction of the Holy Spirit to learn. God is up to something for those that will study to show yourself approved. Right now there's a lot of things in the kingdom that God is trying to establish that goes against people's theology. You need to understand your roots, where you came from. God may require us to change what we're doing to make walking in the kingdom a higher priority than it ever was before. We were never called to have a little light. We were called to be ablaze with the fire of God in this generation. Join the remnant from around the world who are empowered by the Word of God to fulfill God's purpose in these last days. God is speaking something different. That is going to be essential in the days ahead, and that's part of this anointing that we have to have. Prepare yourselves for Spirit-filled teaching. Biblical Life TV. Hello, Rim to the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon is growing all over the world. This is episode number 456. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake. I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. And this is the love of my life. And good day to you all. <laughs> um, I wanted to start out by saying uh, thank you for praying. I believe your prayers had an impact when we prayed over Tampa last time. Uh, it wasn't near as bad as they were expecting. And I know that Florida's had um, horrible damage. And they're certainly in our prayers. But I... I was praying this week, and I felt like there, there were people that were just thinking, well, we, we just pray, God, and we fast, and we pray, and, and it just seems like nothing's going on. But there's a lot going on, and God's using our prayers. Yes, He is. Um, I asked you to uh, continue to pray for the list that we've been praying for, the people. There's not any big developments yet, except uh, Troy has started um, the chemotherapy pills and radiation. And uh, we're just praying that there are no side effects to that, uh, no nausea. And so if you just keep them in prayer, we appreciate that so much. Um, the reason that I have this little truck out here is after the end of our podcast, I'm going to do just a little short thing that I was planning on doing a couple of weeks ago uh, before the traumatic events happened in North Carolina, all the states that were affected by the hurricane. Um, because years ago, when when we started on this journey, 30 years ago, you know, and I saw everything that God showed me, plus I started seeing how deep the corruption was in our nation, how horrible um, the satanic events that were going on. It. My first thought was, I just want to go take my family, let's get in a cave somewhere and just wait. Because when God shows you something that's going to happen, you just feel like it's going to be the next day. It is so vivid, so real. And uh, I was just thinking, well, we're okay, we got to start preparing. And then, and as time went on, I saw, okay, God kept showing me this is going to be a while. Uh, and I've shown you this so you can start preparation, you can start prayers to be ready for what's coming, and, and that some of the things that are headed toward our nation because of judgment, I believe, can be mitigated through prayer. And so that's been my focus. But at the same time, I came to the realization that I was going to have to try to make my kids' lives as normal as they could be. I had to go ahead and prepare them, mm -hmm. you know, through the schooling, through um, just life lessons to get them ready to go out and get jobs eventually and live in the community. So it, it was kind of a, a difficult transition because 
the more Mike researched and the more I remembered because I would remember something and, and he would research it to, because I was just thinking, I would tell him, Mike, I don't know if there's any truth to this or not. This is just what's in my head and I've got such emotion with it and, and the horrors of it. And so he would help me research and, and the more he found out, the more I thought, oh my word, I've actually seen these things in my life. I've got blocked memories of things that when I was on a military base and, and so, um, the reason I'm saying that to you is because we are really in turbulent times. That's not a, a surprise to any of you. Um, I think there are a lot of people that are, are putting out the warnings of what the agenda of the elite is. You know, dark forces. That's all coming out there. I believe that they're, it's accurate. But... I also know that God can change things. Which we have seen over and over again. Over I mean, he has, and over. Because he has, he has delayed what they want to do. We followed what people are saying or the agenda. People that, you know, were in places where they heard things and uh, talked to, to people that knew. And so I don't doubt that at all. What I'm just saying is I've seen over and over they would say, this is the date, no more food. This is the date, you might as well forget getting money out of the bank. And I've seen God delay it and delay it and delay it. He's got a purpose. Here, You know, there's two things going on, in my opinion, of great significance to the kingdom of God. And one is uh, he's preparing his bride. And we have all been in really bad shape. Uh, we've had things going on we didn't know. We've had things that, that have been, uh, you know, just through music, through TV, through um, computers. So much has happened. And we're really, yeah. as, and as a whole... a lot of false doctrine. Yes, in, in pretty rough shape. So there's going to be a shaking. It says that in the Word. And, and the shaking is going to get his bride ready. So we've got then the, the main thrust of what we're supposed to be doing is getting souls saved. As these things begin to happen, you're going to have people wanting to know answers. So God's people should be ready with answers. Um, mm -hmm. and that's, and so that's the main thing I want to give is hope to people. Yes, things, things are horrible, but I've watched horrible things for 30 years and seen God do miracles, not only in our lives, but in, in others. And so I just want to keep you hopeful and also keep you in a frame of mind to where, uh, you still want to have things halfway normal for your kids. That's one of the reasons I've got this little truck set up here. I'm going to do a little uh, extended video after we do the podcast where if you're not interested in, in decorating for feasts and things like that, you don't have to look at it. But f we have a lot of new listeners, young parents that are, are wanting to do the feast of the Lord, leave off pagan things. So I'm going to give you some ideas that are really cost effective. You know, people are really trying to save their money right now. Just show you some things, give you ideas uh, because... You, we don't know how long it's going to be. We don't know uh, what kind of, of miracles God could do to stop. the. In, you know, we've got an invasion on our hands. We've got Chinese people in here. We've got um, Hamas, Hezbollah. We've got all kinds of things planned to yep. destroy us. But we don't know what God's going to do. I mean, this last uh, Saturday... There were millions of people fasting and praying. It was the Day of Atonement, and this year we are we have followed the regular Jewish calendar. We felt like we were supposed to, and and I can see why now because there was a drawing in of people to fast and pray. And it also corresponds with what's going on with Israel right now. Right, right, and and that's what God told me years ago. Um, you know, is on the Day of Atonement as we were learning this to to. Pray and fast for our nation, for Israel. And so, and so we're at pivotal time, but I also want you to look at the fact that this could be extended. You know, I know people are saying, okay, the horses are out, da-da-da-da, da-da-da-da. I think when those horses are loosed, it's going to be something like nobody's ever seen. Uh, you know, I saw some of what is coming in the future, and we're not anywhere close to it. We're not anywhere close to what I saw. And so, you know, whether you're now people that are pre-trib or saying, hey, you know, there's no sense in doing anything. There's no sense in voting. There's no sense in doing anything because we're going to get out of here. Well, no matter what you think about President Trump, right now you've got to look at what that other side is promoting. And you've got to look down the road and say, if those people get in, 
the evil that has been hidden all along is just going to be more to the forefront. There's not going to be any safety for parents to try to keep their, their kids from being mutilated. There's not going to be any hope of stopping abortion. I mean, it's, it's so apparent. God has exposed so much. It's just out there for us, guys. There's, there's no denying what, what these people have in store. And so in my view, if you don't like President Trump, I would say look at this as voting against evil. Yeah. Because what if there's not a pre-trib rapture? You know, what if there's not? What if, what if it's like 10 days before? The, you know, like you've always said, what, how do you describe our, your view on the tribulation? Our, on where, we, you know, whether we leave? I think we're, when you, when you actually put it over the feast, I think that uh, we're probably going to get out of here about 10 days before it's all over. Yeah, it's, that's, it's, it's that's called what I was, I was trying to get um, to. You know, and, and some of the things that, that I'm looking at, and, you know, I, I look at it through prophetic eyes. I look at it with what's going on. Uh, yesterday I saw where um, uh, Harris was saying, you know, I want another debate and all this, and, you know, Trump's refusing to. When What's you, the when, point? You, when you set it in context that the liberal media, you know, it's like when he gets up there, he's not debating one person, he's debating three. And so, and, and I mean, things have come out that the Democratic Party said during the debate, you're not allowed to ask her these questions. You're not, no hard questions, all softball to him. Now you can do whatever you want to him. And so I look at that and say, okay, he's saying it's already stacked against me. I'm not doing anymore. And when you put that in context, that was very bully-like that she was doing. You know, it's like she already knows it's all set in her favor. And so let's have another one. It, it was, it's almost like a bully boasting on the playground. Well, it's, it's all you have to do to see what liars these people are is watch their old clips. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's out there. And so, um, so many different opinions on whether... Trump's this or he's that. What we have to be looking at is God says to stand against evil. Yeah. And that's what this is, is this is a stand against evil. These people don't care anything. Anytime you can cannot care about little children, you think that there's a general care in there for the, the population? And so so you've got to look at these things and and uh, you know there's a ton of people that are gonna vote for her just for the the abortion issue, that's yeah. that's it. So we've got to make a stand wherever we can, and um, and my hope's not in President Trump. No, it's in Christ. I, I've my hope's always been in Jesus because uh, there are things that no president can handle. There are things that that are already in our country that it's going to take the hand of God to stop. But remember this: we serve the God that can stop anything. Yeah, I've seen him stop in our lives things that I thought, God, only you can do it. And he did. You know, you have to look at God's perspective. He wants as many people saved as can be saved. We have generations of kids that have been raised with such lies. They wouldn't know the truth if it hit them upside the head. No fault of their own. And so if you start looking at, at how God would do things... From his perspective, he wants these kids to have a chance to hear truth. He wants these kids to be out of the techno sorcery that Mike talks about that is absolutely rampant. It is a miracle of God and your faith and knowing that God can shield you from everything that's being broadcast at us. There's stuff coming against your mind. There's stuff coming against your body. And, and so if you lose hope right now, you're going to miss something big. You know, and... and how can those kids have hope at the coming out of that techno sorcery of Babylon if we don't first? And so one of the reasons I'm going to do this short little video and show you some ideas of things to do for the, the Feast of Tabernacles is just to, to give you a break. Mm -hmm. Sometimes your mind has to have a break from the, you know, the bombardment of all this information and people just throwing it. And, and I'm sure people are just saying, we've got to get this information to you so you... There's some of this stuff they're saying you can't prepare for. It's like they're saying total annihilation, kiss your rear end goodbye. And I don't see God in that. 
And I, I think we also need to understand with the prophetic, especially someone that's new to the prophetic. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there I've, I've got books sitting on, on the back shelf back here uh, of, of prophetic dictionaries that were written by uh, established prophets. Because when God says soon, that could be 30, 40 years. When God says mm -hmm. it's nearby, um, uh, sometimes it can be so far out. And if you're new to the prophetic, and I think we have some new people that are beginning to move in the prophetic and begin having dreams and stuff like that, that you've not researched this stuff, it all seems so imminent. And there, there are things we're, we're going to get into now that uh, we're getting ready to walk into that Joel thousands of years ago prophesied was mm -hmm. going to happen. And so it, 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 God always gives his people time to prepare, time to ready themselves. And uh, we, we need to, to kind of understand that and, and that there, whenever anything like this is going on, God gives time for his people to prepare. You know, that's why I think even when you look at the cycle of the feast, you have the 10 days of awe, which the king is in the field. There's also time for heaven to make announcements. He's making announcements for what he's going to do the next year. Mm -hmm. So that as we, we go into the next year, because I, I don't believe Rosh Hashanah, where they talk about, it's actually Yom Tura, it's, it's the Feast of Trumpets. Uh, there, there's a lot of debate on whether that's actually the first of the year, because that actually goes back to Babylon. That God said the first of the year, we find in the spring feast. First day of the first month. When, when God basically, you know, some say, well, you know, he reset the calendar. This was the old calendar. He reset it. Did he reset it or did he bring it back to the original mm -hmm. calendar by what he was doing with Israel? Because from the very beginning, when he created the, the sun, moon, and stars, the, the it says he did it for the, the times and seasons. When you look back at the Hebrew, he did it for the Moedim. Long, so, you know, well, well over, um, over 2,000 years before there was ever a Day of Atonement or there was a Sprig Feast, Summer Feast, Fall Feast, God set the stars there and the moon there and everything else so that they would know when those times were. Mm -hmm. God doesn't just do this stuff by happenstance. He, he, he plans the end from the beginning, and he, and he was setting things into motion the very moment that he created man. Mm -hmm. And so we need to understand that no matter what's going on, God has not abdicated the throne, that he has a plan. Yes. And, and part of the shaking and stuff is for us to get the shackles of Babylon off, for us to come back in line with him so that we can, we can understand what he's going to do, how he's going to do it, what the enemy is going to do so that God's people can be prepared. Mm -hmm. And we, we have been preparing. Yeah. We've been preparing for 30 years. You know, recently there's been different things that God's brought our attention to and we're preparing and preparing because we know there's going to be some rough stuff happen. There's no doubt about that. But we should be able to rise as God's people yes. with great faith, knowing that God can do miracles. And I've seen him do it. I've seen him do it. And so one of the reasons I'm doing the thing about the fall feast and give you some ideas is um, you, need, you still need times of celebration with your kids. And to refocus back on Christ. Right, because that's, yeah. that's what this is. I just put some things in that kids like because it's a hard transition going from pagan celebrations to the feast. And so through the years, we've just tried to add things. We were going to do a book. Um, me and Steph have been so busy, we haven't been able to do it, but we think we can, can do a video one of these days. We've got plans to lay out things and, and show you how we've done things through the years. Steph had three boys, so there's uh, lots of ideas she had. You know, she's got her uh, booth all set up, and um, she usually gets the boys uh, backpacks with flashlights and gloves and things because they love this time. So there's things that your kids can really enjoy at the time of learning who Jesus is in the feast. And you know this is a time of celebration so she was even talking about making them deer jerky so there's always uh, snacks and celebration yeah. and, and, and it, it, it's a time just to really refocus on God because you know if we and I, I know we post this on YouTube and stuff but if you just stay focused on everything that's going on without drawing and having that time away. 
it'll overwhelm you. It will. But I mean, even Christ, I mean, he would, as, as, his, as his disciples were ministering to everybody, he pulled them away and said, you need to be alone with me. Mm -hmm. Because it was in those times that they drew strength and they recalibrated themselves back to kingdom because this other stuff uh, will overwhelm you. And that's what the enemy wants. The enemy really enjoys to overwhelm. When I, when I look back, there's a, a document that came out. <coughs> Uh, that's always contributed to the Jewish people. It's called the uh, Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion. And I think it's uh, actually Zion, although I think the Rothschilds had it translated into Hebrew so that the Jewish people would get uh, accused of it. Part of the thing they did is they said, listen, we can't uh, control people from learning what's going on. So what we will do is we will overwhelm them with so many options, with so many different things that it, it shuts them down, that there's, there's no way of coming to a conclusion. You know, it, it's like, how do you lose weight? Well, it's the keto diet. No, it's the carb diet. No, it's this diet, that diet. And, and you're so overwhelmed from so many different directions that you cannot come to a conclusion. The only way to come to a conclusion, I think, for all of us in every situation, we can look and gather the information that we need. You, you get alone with God and you let Him give you what you're supposed to do. Yeah. And, and that's, that's going to be in, in the days ahead that we need to turn some of this stuff off and draw away mm -hmm. to God so that He can begin to speak to us. Mm -hmm. So that we, and, and you know, part of the feast is realigning ourselves back to the rhythm of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And as we do, God's going to start showing us what to do. Uh, and, and sometimes it can be little adjustments. Sometimes it might be big adjustments. But And the adjustment that I need to do may not be the same for another family. Right. It's, it's these things that God has called my household to mm -hmm. do. And, and as we do that, then we're going to find that we're prepared and that we're going to be, uh, we're going to give a word in season to those that, that may be weary that need to hear that. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what God is calling us to do. That's right. So at the end of this, if you'd like to look at the little things I've brought out, and you can just listen to the next. Is it going to be a, a separate or just at the end? Is it's just going to be at the end. I'm just going to post it at the end. Okay, and I can have you take pictures of the things so you can see them close up if you want to zoom in on them as I talk about them. Yep. So for this, for this com coming week, I, you know, this was so, so intense praying for all the folks that are this thing and in uh, North Carolina. I think there's going to be so much found out about what has happened. And so the good news is, is there are the body of Christ, churches, uh, individuals going in and, and helping. I encourage you if there's, um, you know, any donation that you're, um, that you're thinking of making, find an organization that you trust. There's, there's several of them, I think, that are good. Um, we always give to the Convoy of Hope because we know exactly what yeah. they do. They're, yeah, Convoy you know, of Hope was down there immediately. So was Samaritan's, Samaritan's Purse. Purse and, and there are others. But as I think everyone's finding out, you know, there's, there's not much that you can depend on with the government in this. But there's so many lives that are, I mean, just totally upended that they have no money. They, they, I, I'm assuming most of their identification's gone. And, you know, anything that you deal with the government, it, whether you've lost your Social Security card, you go try to get a, anything. And, and for me, working in a government position, everything is tedious and drawn out. And so let's be praying for God to just make um, a miraculous way for these people to get back on their feet, in addition to, you know, praying for their health and, yeah. and this grieving process. And we might add, when you look at Weishaupt's five, five cycles of society, Right before the collapse of everything, in comes bureaucracy because bureaucracy is what inevitably mm -hmm. collapses everything. Yeah. Well, in this this last day of atonement, as we were fasting and praying, there were millions of people doing the same thing, and I could actually sense in the spirit realm. I'm telling you, there was a receding of darkness. Now it's you know it, this has happened a lot in my life. It happened in 1995. It happened in 2005. Um, there are times when God's people pray and fast together, you know, and, and it will, the darkness flees. It may be temporarily because we still got so many things that have to be prayed through and, and repentance and things, but I, it receded. So don't think, you may, you may be thinking, you know, I don't see my prayers being answered. I don't see things changing. 
you wait till you hear the roar that we're, we're getting ready yeah. to talk about. Where God took me this week was in Acts chapter 2. And uh, let me get my... Oh, here it is, right in front of me. Uh, where it says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushy, rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there are only two scriptures that have that word sound in the concordance when I looked it up that means roar. It's, it's in this uh, Acts chapter 2 and then it goes back to, uh, goes to Hebrews 12 which is talking about uh, back in Moses' day the sound of a trumpet, the voice of words. And so I thought, you know, all these words that where the word sound is in the scriptures, but those are the only two where there is a roar like an echo. And so I started just meditating on that and asking God um, about it. And he reminded me of this song that I've heard. It's on commercials. It's out there. Uh, I, I thought it actually, I thought it was by, um, what's that? Oh, her name just left Katie me. Katy Perry. No, Katy no. Perry's the one it actually was done by, but I thought it was this other girl that's dating the football player. Oh, I just lost her name. You guys probably know. Taylor Swift. That's it. Uh, but it was actually Katy Perry that uh, released this song called Roar. And I wanted to just read a, a little stanza. And it says, I've got the eye of the tiger, which is one of the... Um, that's a trigger for mind control, by the way. And I don't have any doubt that little, that little girl is, well, she's not a little girl, I guess, but she's a kid to me. Um, it says, I've got the eye of the tiger, a fighter, dancing through the fire, because I'm a champion and you're going to hear me roar. Louder, louder than a lion, because I'm a champion and you're going to hear me roar. And God was telling me, and I already, I already knew this in our area, uh, that there is a, a Kabbalistic lion that people talk about as being the lion of the tribe of Judah, only in the back when no one's, no, no one's listening, they call it Judah. And this is a Kabbalistic roar, a, a counterfeit of the lion of the tribe of Judah. And so um, God was telling me that there's a sound coming, <laughs> and it's the real lion of the tribe of Judah. And it's going to be a sound like we have not heard. And so um, I was talking to Mike about that so he could, you know, go through the scriptures and, and talk about that. So to give you guys, guys hope that, that our hope is in Jesus and what he accomplished. You know, a lot of times if you look back at the Old Testament, you see the judgments. You see the judgments. Those things happened because Jesus' blood had not been shed. There was nothing to stop the huge demonic power that was being built through the disobedience, through the, the sin and iniquity. And so there, were, there had to be, you know, great judgments. Now we do have to put on top of the Old Testament the covenant that came with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's my, always been my concern about the Hebraic roots. And I love the, the information of going back and seeing, seeing our Hebraic heritage. But I see, I see elements of this Kabbalistic lion within it. And it draws them away. From Messiah. Absolutely. And so um, that's, that's pretty much all I had to say, sweetheart. To well, I wanted, you. I wanted, when I'm, this isn't in my notes. That's why I had to take time to look it up. Uh, one of the things is, as you were talking, the Holy Spirit told me to remind the people, all prayers are answered. Whether now, or especially where, where we're living today, there's going to come a time that certain prayers are reserved for a specific time. We find this in Revelation chapter 8, starting with verse 1. And then he opened the seventh seal, and there was silence in heaven for about a half hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them was given seven trumpets. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. And he was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints. How many of the saints? Oh. All the saints, okay. Upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel 
stood, uh, took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. And there was noises and thunders and lightning and an earthquake. Now what I think is really interesting is when you jump over to chapter 11, you see a kind of a, the same thing when the tabernacle is opened in heaven and the Ark of the Covenant is revealed. Everybody's looking for it on earth. It's not on earth, it's in heaven, okay? And uh, same thing, and this is verse 19 of chapter 11. And then the temple of the Lord was opened in heaven and the Ark of His Covenant was seen in his temple, and there were lightnings and voices and thunders and an earthquake and great hail. There are certain things that we're right now that we have been praying. Some of them God can answer now mm -hmm. about dealing with the Illuminati, dealing with the market, with, with the, the beast system that's rising, and dealing with Mystery Babylon. There are aspects of our prayers that heaven is reserving and pooling together in heaven and those prayers remain until we get to Revelation chapter 8. Mm -hmm. And then in that instant when you start seeing uh, the vials of God's wrath being poured out is the answer to those prayers. And so every prayer is, is answered by God. But I want to deal today with the uh, three wars of God. I'm going to try to do something different. Mary and I notice, you know, if, if I'm teaching this and I'm teaching it to her and I'm not, I'm looking at the camera, I'm looking at her, I end up with really a bad crick to nets. So I'm yeah, going to try to look too, forward. I looking at him. <laughs> um, hey, this, this is all learning experience for us. Which I, maybe we should have a V-shaped table. But um, I, w I want to start in... Um, I, I think there's three roars, specific roars that... that, that God does. And the first one we find in Exodus chapter 20 verses 18 through 21. And this is when God's people, they're delivered from Egypt. God brought down Pharaoh. He poured out the nine plagues and, and they, they're, they're standing before Mount Sinai. And starting in verse 18, and now all the people witnessed the thunderings and the lightning flashes and the sound of the trumpet and the mountain, sm and the mountain smoking. Isn't it kind of the same symbol symbolism that we see in the book of Revelation that mm -hmm. I just read? Okay. And when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. And then they said to Moses, You speak with us and we will hear, but uh, let not God speak with us lest we die. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, for God has come to test you, that his fear may come before you, so that you sin not. So the people stood far off, and Moses drew near in the thickness, thick darkness where God was. There, there are several things that God has to establish as I think part of the reason right now why the body of Christ is in such disarray is we've lost the fear of God. Mm -hmm, for sure. So some of the things that God is doing, and some of the, I, I think, the, the, the roar, the thunder, the smoke, and all these different things, and the fire, is to reestablish the fear of God among His people. Once He establishes that fear, He can take them on to the next level, okay? But this, this was a roar from Mount Sinai. Uh, you know, and I mean, there, there's, I've always wondered, God always tells us the end from the beginning. We see the book of Revelation in the book of Exodus. Mm -hmm. There God delivered his people from Pharaoh in Egypt who had enslaved them and actually built Egypt on the blessing that God channeled, if you will, through Joseph, Okay. And we can say, you know, they're, they're saying, you know, Masons built the world, they're doing this, they're, they're, they're uh, doing that in America. Let me tell you something, when you, when you really understand American history, the only reason the Masons were able to do anything that they did is they built it on the back of the revival that God gave through Jonathan Edwards yes. and George Whitfield and stuff. And so once again, we have a Pharaoh system, which became Mystery Babylon, that was built off of the backs of God's people that were blessed by God. Yeah. And why, why did, there are, there are a lot of reasons that God poured out the nine plagues. Uh, number one, he was judging the gods of Egypt, just like the, the vials that God pours out of his wrath is judging uh, the principalities and powers and rulers of darkness that are controlling the world right now. At the same time, Mary, he strips all the wealth that the world has gotten off the back of God's people because God blessed his people. Mm hmm it, it's the same thing over again. So we're going to see the same pattern that we see in the Exodus in the book of Revelation. We're, we're seeing this same pattern. Now in the book of Hebrews, we have the writer of Hebrews describes this very thing. And it's, I'm, I'm going to connect all this here in a minute, starting in verse 18 of Hebrews 12. 
For you have not come, so he's, he's actually contrasting where we are now compared to where they were then. For you have not come to a mountain that may, not, that may be touched and that burned with fire and to blackness and darkness and tempest and to the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words so that those who had heard it begged that that word should not be spoken to them anymore. For they could not endure what was commanded. And if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it was to be stoned or shot through with an arrow. And so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I'm exceedingly afraid and tremble. And I've always marveled at that. Moses wanted to bring them back to see the burning bush. God, I mean, God spoke to him very gently. And how many in our lives has, uh, when God first begins dealing with us, he speaks to us very gently. It's not a burning mountain, it's a burning right. bush, okay? And he says, listen, man, you got to take off your sandals when you go there. This is going to be really cool. You're going to see this bush. And he goes up there and the entire mountain is on fire. And it's like all hell was released or all heaven, if you will, was released on that mountain. And one of the things that we're, we miss if you don't, uh, the, the five things that we need to understand Scripture, context, history, geography, culture, and language. Well, the history is this experience, Exodus chapter 20, is the establishment of Shavuot. Mm -hmm. The fire was on the mountain. God spoke. There was a roar that was released from heaven. And the only times that we see the equivalent of this is Exodus 20 and Acts chapter 2. Okay? Because this, this is the first. God was, he, he delivered his people. He gathered them out. And now he was reestablishing covenant with them on Acts chapter 2, we have Messiah has risen. He has ascended. Uh, in fact, before he departs, he breathes the Holy Spirit on, 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 his, on, on his disciples, on the apostles. And at that moment, they're born again. Okay. Now they're gathering on the Shavuot after his resurrection. We see this in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 6. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were with one accord in one place, and suddenly there was a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them uh, divided tongues as of fire, and it sat on each one of them. In fact, I've got a teaching on YouTube on that. Uh, there's, there's not just one tongue, there's a multiplicity of tongues because each tongue had a purpose of fire uh, within the people of God. It's on, it's on YouTube. And sat on each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem uh, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when the sound occurred, the multitude came together and, and were confused because everyone heard them speak in their own language. Now, one of the things that the rabbis taught centuries before Acts chapter 2 is that when God, when God did this on Mount Sinai and He spoke and said, this is my covenant, because right before this in, in, Acts, in the Exodus, He spoke the Ten Commandments. Okay, so He's speaking, He's making covenant. One of the things the rabbis, you know, we have the fire, we have the voice of God that's literally shaking the entire earth, and they say that all mankind heard the voice of God in their own language, but only Israel gathering around Mount Sinai said, we will hear and we will do. Okay? Now you contrast that to the reason that you had all these Jews from every, from every nation under heaven. They heard the gospel when the, when the apostles spoke in their native language because it was a matching of what happened on Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. And because of what the completed work of Messiah did, now you have those Jews that heard the gospel in their own language were responding to the command and said, we will hear and we will do. We will obey Messiah. We, we're, we're recognizing the symbolism. God roared at Mount Sinai then. Now he's roaring in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, number one, everyone hears the gospel in their native language compared to the first Pentecost. The fire that fell on Mount Sinai that gave the commandments now falls on those that received Messiah to empower them to live the commandments through the power of Messiah, which causes them to be a witness. God began to roar in Jerusalem, and thousands received Messiah. This was just the beginning. And so Peter, by the unction of the Holy Spirit, begin to say, okay, I, I understand what God's doing now. He, he had a moment of clarity, 
And he picks this up in Acts chapter 2, verses 17 through 21. And it said, And it came to pass in the last days, said, God, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And upon my servants, my manservants and my maidservants, in other words, bond servants. And we've actually lost the idea of what a bond servant is. Mm -hmm. Paul would call himself a bond servant before he would ever call himself an apostle. Mm -hmm. I think only true fivefold ministries, if they're functioning in it and not being a hireling, they are a bond servant before they're anything else. And what's interesting is after God gave the Ten Commandments, all of a sudden he starts going into the, the law of the bond servant. That after, after seven years, if you're a servant in a household and you have fallen in love with that master and it's time for you to be free, you have a choice. You can be free or you can say, listen, I have fallen in love with my master. And there's a ritual that they do that they bring you to the doorpost of his house and they will pierce your ear because they nail your ear to the doorpost of that man's house. And what that says is forever I will only obey his voice. Mm -hmm. We're going to see a remnant that are going to absolutely block out the den of the enemy's camp. Mm-hmm. It's not about prestige, it's not about money, it's not about who's knowing, who knows your name, it's about who knows your master's name. Well, that's right. And you see, our master has a doorpost because the cross became the doorpost of planet Earth and that became his doorpost that he himself was nailed to and he is calling me to take my ear and to nail it to the cross and saying, I will only obey the voice of my king and nobody else. And those are the manservants and and handmaidens of the Lord in Mm -hmm. this last day that will only hear him and upon them I need a hanky I've, I've done oh. teared myself up enough where I can't see the notes I keep a box here now <laughs> we need them <laughs> I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy and I will show my wonders in heaven above and, and see we can, we can stop and say okay they'll prophesy they did that in Jesus day Okay, but now he keeps on reading. It's, it's almost like Jesus. You remember when, when he, he preached in Nazareth and said, this is, the, uh, this is the year of Jubilee? And he stops in reading that out of Isaiah where it declares uh, the day of the Lord, which is what we're getting ready to walk into. He stops and says, I'm stopping right here because right now Messiah bin Joseph The rest is yet to come when I come back as Messiah ben David. Peter continues because in this age that we're in right now, this is the beginning of it. This is the end of it. And it started on the day of Pentecost with the roar of God. And what we're going to find out in the book of Hebrews, there is a third roar coming. And when that roar comes, we're going to start picking up with verse 19. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and smoke and and va- uh, blood and fire and vapor of smoke, and the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood after the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord, and it shall come to pass whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So it's like there's some here, but there's a third roar coming. In fact, we have to go back to Hebrews chapter 12. And when you when you read it, it's like, okay, Mount Zion, uh, Mount Sinai was terrifying. Mount Zion isn't. Mm -hmm. Okay. At the same time, the writer of Hebrews saying there's a time coming at Mount Zion that there's going to be a greater penalty for refusing the voice of God than those who did it at Mount Sinai. Mm. Okay. These are the days that we're walking in. That's why it's so important to, to do the feast, center up a Messiah, to have those days on the Sabbath, that we just turn all this stupid stuff off. You have to have that time alone with God so that you can recharge your battery and get your marching orders for the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. 
It says, but you have come, this is verse 22, but you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God and to the heavenly Jerusalem and to the innumerable company of angels and to the, the general assembly and the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven and to God the judge of all and to the spirits of just men made perfect and to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant and the sprinkling of blood that speaks better things than that of Abel. Doesn't that just sound wonderful? Woohoo! This is this so much better. It's peaceful. We're we're seeing angels. Uh, G, the blood of Jesus is speaking, and and uh, better things than that of Abel. Abel's cried out for vengeance. Jesus' blood is crying out for the redeemed to be manifested. Okay, that's great stuff. But then he stops and says, "Listen, there, there's coming this roaring from heaven." And it says, "See that you do not refuse him who speaks." Uh oh, the, the, the attitude's changing here. With this third roar, mm -hmm. there's a responsibility for the remnant to hear. Yes. See that you do not refuse him who speaks, for if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, that's referring, referring to Moses. Much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks in heavens, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that can be shaken, as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. And I actually think that this is referring, where in the days ahead, Mary, remember when Jesus took the disciples to Mount Hermon? And I, I've preached this before. There's, there's two ones of binding and loosing. One where he was talking about we as a people. It's not the government that says you can bind and loose. This is what you allow in your community of faith. It's the fivefold ministry. It's the people of God. Mm -hmm. Because the rabbis would say we allow this in our community. We won't allow this in our community. And Mary, they were able to do that even under Roman rule. We have the divine right to do that now. Mm -hmm. But the second one, he takes them to Mount Hermon. He takes them to where the entrance to Hades is. He takes them to where the Grotto of Pan is. He takes them to where the Fortress of Nimrod is. He takes them there. That's ground zero. That's where, that's where the watchers descended that caused Genesis 6. Mm -hmm. Okay. He takes them to ground zero and says... I'm getting ready to establish my church, my, my, those, my ecclesia, those that have been called out of Babylon, those that have been call, called out of mystery Babylon. And the f gates of hell or otherwise the full council of hell are not going to prevail against them. And to set that back into context, that's not just principalities, powers, rulers of darkness. That includes the watchers that were imprisoned and didn't begin to be released until the turning of the 20th century. So he's prophesying ahead unto our day. Mm -hmm. And he was saying, when that day comes, he's prophesying through his disciples, through the apostles, to where we are now, that when all hell breaks loose, heaven is about to break loose in the midst of it, God is about to speak, and that if we hear that voice and do not refuse him who speaks, mm. while well, everything is being shaken, there's going to there's come a time, and we see it in the book of Revelation, that Satan is cast down to earth. Heaven empties out the second heaven. All the principalities and powers and rulers of darkness are cast into the second heaven, and Psalms 82 is going to be fulfilled, that God's going to judge them and said, you made yourself gods, but you're going to die like men. Mm. We're going to be here during that time, yet the power of God is going to be there, and Jesus has already told them, what you bind on earth is bound in heaven. That when they're cast down to the first heaven, they're in our territory. Right now they're up there. Mm -hmm. I can't bind them up there. Now I can pray and bind their influence over me right now. Because that's a first heaven manifestation. But I can't go up there and bind them. I've got to ask heaven. I've got to ask the Father to send angels up there to war against them, to impede their work. Mm -hmm. Plus every time that I win somebody to Jesus, I'm pulling their batteries out where they lose power. Okay? But when... Imagine all the Masons and all the, the Illuminati and all the, the occultists that all of a sudden Apollo's here, Zeus is here, and all these, all these demigods which are nothing more than Nephilim 
and and uh, and principalities and powers that that have made themselves gods over humanity. Now they're now they they they're restricted to the first heaven where everybody can see them. They can't phase out. They can't. They're they're now limited and restricted by the physical world. And when they come across a believer, that believer is able to bind them up. Well, it's like a, what God showed me was praise and worship during this time where we're hearing God speak. We're echoing what he's speaking from heaven. Yeah. So it's like the only thing I can compare it to what I saw was, um, you know, those big metal machines that'll crush a vehicle. Yeah. Just squash it down to nothing. It's like heaven and the roar down here meet and do a smash burger. <laughs> That's the only way I know how to describe what I saw. Well, we also see that in the book of Revelation because we, we go into the, the scripture, we say that we overcome by the blood land, the word of our testimony, mm -hmm. and loving not our life unto death. You put everything back into context. In the scriptures before, Satan's thrown out of heaven, okay? Mm -hmm. He comes down here, and we overcome him. We overcome him. We overcome him. By the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, and loving not our life unto death. He gets his rear end kicked up there. He comes down and gets his rear end kicked up here. And now it says that he has great wrath, but he doesn't come after the saints. He comes after those that receive the mark. Mm -hmm. It's like the only ones left that he can go to that are vulnerable are those that were following him. He comes after the Illuminati. He comes after those that have received the mark. He comes after the Masons, those that were worshiping him. He comes after all those because they failed him. They didn't create enough power for him to succeed. And he goes after them so that everything that can be shaken is shaken. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't stop there. Therefore, that's one of my favorite words, especially in the New Testament. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and holy fear. What happened on, on Shavuot, the very first one? They, they were instilled with a holy fear. The remnant are going to have a holy fear mm -hmm. for God, and That's it's going right. to cause them to, great, to do great exploits mm -hmm. in the last days because our God is a consuming yep. fire. The, and, and see, for me, if I'm right with God, I was made to hold the fire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was made to hold the fire. That's true. That's good. I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. I have the yeah. fire of God on the inside of me, and I am not consumed because I have become the burning bush that mm -hmm. God can speak through. I have become that which God can use in the last days. That's where we are right now. That's mm -hmm. why it is so important to get centered up on Him. Yes. Because the world is getting ready to rock and roll like mm -hmm. never before. But let me tell you something, so's God. <laughs> And, you know, I've always wondered, you know, some of these guys, it seems like angels come through their home every week. And a lot of that I have a big question mark about. But Mary, we're getting ready to see angels. We're getting ready to see miracles. We're getting ready to see the manifested wrath of God pour out on a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. But we as believers, if I'm right with God, I can walk right through the wrath of God and I can come out on the other side because I'm his messenger. That's true. And when God showed his power to Egypt, part of his power was the restoration of his people as they walked out of that bondage. Oh, yeah. And so there is going to be a restoration for those for the remnant that... Everything that the toxic environment that they've poured on us through drugs, through through air, through f food, everything, he's going to see us be restored into stronger than we've ever been for this last days. And I think we need to begin doing the Lord's Supper a whole lot more. Yeah, we did that th on Saturday. I think we need to start doing it every Sabbath. In fact, yeah. there may be times that uh, the Holy Spirit may say, Take it now. Why? Because maybe there was a toxin the enemy released that would just hit your body. And God says, if you take, if you, if you, mm -hmm. if you remember, because there's, there, there is a power in remembering. That's why, that's why the feast, I, by remembering what he has done, it prepares me for what he's getting ready to do. 
when I remember what Christ did for me at the cross, it realigns me with heaven. That's it. That's it. You see, there's the, some of the greatest turning points. There, there's a turning point when God said, I've had it with Israel. Moses, I'm going to wipe them out. I've had enough. It's no longer going to be the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm going to be the God of Moses. I'm going to start fresh with you. And the Bible says that Moses interceded. And it said God remembered his covenant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are times that when we remember, it's because heaven is moving us to remember so that we connect with the covenant. There are times in our intercessory prayer, you're not telling me that when those angels take that censer filled with the prayers of God's people and he's throwing out at that moment, God says, I remembered my covenant. Yeah, and how it. dare you do what you do that's to my it. earth and to my people. And therefore, I'm going to judge the evil mm -hmm. and I'm going to bring yeah, down the right. Antichrist system. And I'm going to judge these principalities and powers that fell at the Tower of Babel. And, it, and because right after all of that, the scripture, it says that the wedding feast has come because his wife has made herself made ready. ready. We're, we're no longer trying to grow. We have matured into yeah. becoming that wife. And, and all of a sudden, there's a, there's a turning of the tide. And we remember. And God yeah. begins to move. And in that same declaration, it says the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. In other words... God takes the world back from those principalities and powers mm -hmm. and say, you, there was a time limit, and that time limit's yeah. over, and I'm taking the planet back. I'm taking the nations back that I don't care how much the UN roars. I don't care how much the World Economic Forum roars. Yeah. I don't care how much that the, the Illuminati roar. I tell you what, I'm getting ready to roar, and they're gonna, you're going to find out in a moment's notice that when Almighty God begins to roar, we simply had a bunch of cats meowing like little kittens compared yes. to Almighty God. Yes, that's exactly what's getting ready to happen. And we will see great times of victory before that great day. Absolutely. We will see it. And God's going to raise up his people. He's getting us restored. He's going to, you know, one of the things that I always, um, as I saw the, the two roads that the body of Christ was heading into, the one where the judgment's there, the one where the more we repent and the body of Christ responds yeah. to what God's saying, then we can see that mitigated. And I even see places being prepared like to where um, there's there's the right kind of food there, the right kind of nutrition, the a place where you can do exercises. So the body has some time to get ready. Yep. Because because everybody's beat down. I mean, you take you take people that that are thought they ate good their whole life. They've been poisoning us for decades. And and they've been eating vegetables and and thought that they they are still having these diseases. Yep. And so we have to have that time of restoration. I believe there will be a day we come to where God's just going to do miracle restorations. We may see more and more of that. But in the meantime. Um, I believe that we're, we're going to have to really pray over our food till we can get it turned around. And, I mean, there's something I add whenever I pray over our, our, our meals that I've had, quick, you know, when I'm out, out and about, I have people coach me because I ask God to break every curse. Uh, it doesn't go back to the curse of Genesis 3. It goes back to one of the things that we have discovered, not only the poisoning and everything mm -hmm. that they have done, and there's, there's type of, of biochemical sorcery going on with it. Uh, but also that they, the occult stage people in the entire food industry from, uh, from manufacturing to restaurants mm -hmm. to speak curses over the foods right. that would land specifically on believers. And if a witch prepares food and you eat it, it can affect your body. Now yeah, God this, can, this ask King Saul with the witch of Endor. <laughs> God, can, God can cleanse it to where it doesn't make you sick, but it can affect you spiritually. And there is a reason why that witch prepared King Saul food before mm -hmm. she did her channeling and all that she stuff. She was going to have influence where he wasn't going to kill her. So. That's right. So guys, we need to understand what the enemy's doing, but at the same time we need to understand what God mm -hmm. is doing. He's got a plan. Uh, we, we need to be ready for it. We need to hear from heaven. We need to begin moving with heaven. Uh, and in fact, I have a, a series that's on YouTube called The Bond Servant. I encourage you guys to look that up on YouTube and go through it because 
the remnant are the bond servants of God. Mm -hmm. We need to understand what a bond servant is. And that's just a free one. It's free. You it's can, free. You it's don't. on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I encourage you to to maybe go through those and uh, with your with your Sabbath group or whatever, or just for your own personal thing, and, and take notes about it and, and say, God, if there's anything in my life stopping me from being a bond servant, I want you to deal with it because I want my ear nailed to the cross because it's only that Messiah that I'm going to listen to. Mm -hmm. It's only that yeah, God that I'm that going one. to listen to. The and real I, one. And I, I, <laughs> I want, if the enemy is screaming around me and Jesus whispers, I want to be able to pick up his voice out of the, from the, from mm -hmm. the den of the world. And, if, there, and there are false Jesus being taught. Oh my goodness. But that's, that's where our spirit will recognize and say, there's something wrong. In fact, a lot of the church is guilty of idolatry because we have made a Jesus that will placate our carnality. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jesus, when it comes to the carnal flesh, he says you have one choice. Here's a hammer, here's a nail, get to it. Well, Father, I ask that you would yes. give the remnant, Father, the, the grace to become your bondservants, that our ear has been nailed to the cross that we would only hear your voice, that we'd be filled with your fire, and that as you roar, we can become resonators of heaven to roar with you. Yes. That we can proclaim your truth, your justice, your judgment, your gospel in the earth, Father. That we're going to see signs and wonders that never point to man. It's not about building a ministry. It's about building the kingdom. And Father, we thank you and we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Now, hold on for those that would like to see uh, some of the things that Mary's going to share about, about things that we can do. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so we're going to kind of reset everything up to where we can do it here, and she'll be right back. Hey, everyone. I wanted to share with you a few little ideas for decorations for the feast. Um, and I think you can, you can get most of these things pretty in inexpensive if you get clearance items. Like right now, I'm looking for clearance um, for summertime things, springtime things, because that's when you can really get uh, the deals on them, you know, like 90% off. Um, I wanted to show you this. This is one of the, the little trucks that I had bought for myself years ago at uh, Hobby Lobby is where I got this. And they, you know how if you've ever been in Hobby Lobby, you'll see that they often have um, things like 50% off. I think back when I bought this, it's, I'm sure it's higher. I think it's $16.99 the last time I looked at it, but you can get them, wait till they're 50% off. And uh, I actually bought six of these um, when we were at our other building so that we could have them on the, the tables uh, for one of the feast times because I just thought the kids would love it. Um, and this was so you could you could get that now if, so for eight dollars and fifty cents if they had it fifty uh, percent off or if you just wanted to um, just put a little thing in the center of the table with flowers or um, you could put a menorah you know just different things I always just tried to think of things colorful things that kids would like um, and these little pumpkins were the perfect size to go back in this like the trucks hauling pumpkins and those are like a big bag of them for a dollar at the dollar stores and this is just a little bale of hay so to just give you an idea of things that you can do these these napkins I don't use this <laughs> I buy these napkins when they're um, you know on clearance and things and I, I don't use them like as the napkins at, for the table I use them like for a centerpiece and so you don't have to have a whole bunch of them um, this was uh, we got these a, a couple of years ago, and we got a ton of them because they were originally at Walmart, uh, 268, and they had them on clearance for 67 cents. And so, um, anytime I come across something like that, I I buy tons of them uh, because we were having the conferences. Um, these are two pretty little napkins, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to. Uh, have Mike take close-up pictures of these and so you can see what they look like. I got both of these. These were like nothing. I got them on clearance and they were they were just nothing. So if, if you look for these things and, and sometimes you can find clearance things that they're getting rid of um, like the last couple of years things and still get really good prices on them right now. Um, 
this is a, a you can tell I love these trucks. Um, this is a, a cute little thing that I thought that you might like to put on the tables. It has the red truck on it. And the, I got these at uh, Big Lots. It was three fifty for eight plates. And so that just some ideas. It'd be cute to have these as a plate and maybe little find little red trucks uh, that are like the Hot Wheels kind or Matchbox. That would be cute for, for little boys. And, you know, I got a lot of things for little boys, but, I mean, the little girls things to me are so easy, you know, because all the cute little things that you could find for that. And instead of, um, you know, like if you wanted to roll these up, you can take like, you can get really pretty ribbon at the dollar stores and then you just take it around and use a hot glue gun and there's there's your little napkin ring and you know put that beside your your place that's something that's neat and then this is just something i was going to show you that um i made years ago to put on the tables by every plate and the reason i could do that is i had been saving all these little jars like this have this happened to be a, an apple butter jar um, but it's like a olive jar. You just save those, and then I just spray painted it with a cream color. I had, uh, if you go to these craft stores, you can get lots of stickers and get them on clearance. And uh, this this would have been maybe pennies to make this if you if you had saved the jars. And I would stick those stickers on there, and then I took those little um, paints that are. Um, fabric paints. And they have those little tips and I just put some black dots, yellow dots on these strawberries that are on here. I put a little scripture. This one says laugh with me. Genesis 20 uh 21 6. It's really little on there but it was where um, Sarah was saying that those will laugh with her because uh, the miracle baby. And so I mean, you can go to town on these. This is raffia, and you can get a ton of it for a dollar or a dollar twenty-five now at the dollar store. And what I did is, is you can put tissue paper in there and fill it with all kinds of stuff. You know, it's easy to make things that, that girls like, um, but if you were doing, you know, wanted something for men, you could put tissue paper, put um, some beef jerky in there. You could put a, a, you could put stickers that were like about fishing things and put a couple of lures in there. I mean, it's just no end, but, but this would cost you nothing. And so I just wanted to tell you that you can have all kinds of things. Um, and like I said in the podcast we did earlier, Steph and I are going to get some things together. We've got tons of pictures we've taken over the years of the different things that we've done. One of the main things I, I would suggest for you with kids to get them excited is lots of color. You know, the main thing you're going to be doing is teaching your kids about the feast and teaching them the word. But, but there's fun things you can do. This would be a great thing. Like once you spray painted these, you could have the kids make this with you so easy. And so I'm going to have um, Mike just take close-ups of these so you can get a look at them if you'd like to. But I just, uh, I encourage you to take those times off. You know, we've got, we've got to be in constant prayer because there's so many things, so many things at stake. But take those times with your family and have that time of prayer. Love you guys. Be praying for you. The fallen immortals that rule the kingdom of darkness have enabled the esoteric societies that control this world to nearly fulfill Nimrod's dark directive. They have taken society down the Luciferian rabbit hole into a technological matrix of darkness. But the Almighty will not allow the enemy to bring his demonic forces for the final showdown without raising up one of his own. God is waking up people around the world who are shaking off their techno-sorcery-induced spiritual slumber and are answering heaven's call. There is an end-time empowerment coming for God's remnant, and it is beginning to unfold in our day. It is time to awaken, be empowered, and become the Sheerith in this generation. The Sheerith Imperative is a must-have tactical manual for God's remnant in the last days. Get your copy at kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. Hell may have its directive, but heaven has its imperative. Thank you for watching Biblical Life TV. We hope and pray that today's program edified you in the Word of God. 
Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.